went out, we got upgraded to the, the Economy, Economy Plus, Plus yeah. which were like $600 tickets. We paid like 300 bucks, so we're pumped right now. Yeah, that's really cool. Look at this. Yeah, let me flip it around. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Look at Hell that. Yeah. And I'm 6'5". That's the most legroom I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Alright, we're in sushi on a plane in Thailand at 2 a.m. in the morning. Here we go. Mmm. Yeah. just a little bit out of the city but we're right next to a train station and so we're planning on using this as kind of our travel point to go everywhere else in Tokyo for the next three days. in downtown Tokyo and it has every single piece of Pokemon merchandise you could possibly think of. Alright so me and William are at a fancy mall and we just bought some really high-end um, and they're basically sushi triangles. And they're really good, so we're about to find out how good they are. Just trying new stuff. That looks good. We got a lemon cake. How is it? Really good. So we just got out of Takashimaya Mall, and it was the fanciest place I've ever been in. People were like fanning themselves and walking around with canes, like all the stuff you see in the movie. It was nuts. But the desserts were really good. So we're about to eat a tart cake from Henry Sharpenjee. This ranch as well. Look at that. It's even got its own ice pack to keep it cold. reservation-only Pokemon Cafe in Tokyo, and I just received my Pikachu Carbonara Pasta. William, what do you got there? I've got my Eevee Burger. Ooh, it looks, looks really great. Cool. Yeah, I hope it's gonna be good. Tasty. Alright, we're taking our first bite into Pikachu Carbonara. Oh my gosh. <laughs> parts about Japan is sometimes you have horses in the subway. So me and William just got to Shinjuku which is the entertainment district here in Tokyo and check out all of these capsules. Just hanging out on the side of the street and they've got everything.
to how it works is you get a tray, you get some tongs, and you just grab stuff. That's all it's delicious. So right now we're on our way to Akihabara, which used to be the electronics district in Tokyo, but now it's turned into more of like a otaku anime slash manga uh, type district. So I'm hoping to find some cool Yu-Gi-Oh stuff here and hopefully some cool tech stuff as well. We think we found a card shop. Alright, so we made it to the card shop and it's literally like all cards. They even have vending machines for Yu Gi Oh cards. So you literally just put in coins and it dispenses the card. So let's try it out. So we're going to try out the Yu Gi Oh card vending machine here in Akihabara. So put in one, two, three, and then Oh shoot! Oh, that is so cool. Okay, we got three cards. Let's find out what they are. Look at that. I actually think I might know who that guy is. Oh, we got a six samurai card for Cameron. Nice. Okay, so right now we're in Super Potato, which has literally every single possible kind of retro gaming system or game. You can buy NESs, family computers, every single kind of game. Uh, like the, the Yu-Gi-Oh game on. Yeah. He's never playing arcade games on the arcade floor. Alright, so we just got out of the anime and we, we went up to the 8th floor and it, there are like these really tall buildings so you start at the top and you kind of make your way down through all these floors and I noticed there were a lot of like like pink books and not really anything that we recognized and so we got to the very bottom and we we looked it up and looked up the translator on the title and it turns out that we were actually at the girls anime so it's like only girls anime and manga and so it's all this musical stuff and it was super weird so now we're off to find the the guy's anime place that's gonna have like Yuhi on all the stuff we're looking for. So we spent the day going up and down uh, basically these Yu-Gi-Oh skyscrapers with 
basically every single kind of card you can think of. And uh, we're at the point now where William has to buy some shoes, and we're finding out that here in Japan, they don't sell shoes over a size 11 and a half US. And uh, right now he's wearing Crocs. So we're on the hunt for new shoes now. Wish us luck. So we got some real life Mario Kart going on down here. Naki Hobar, look at that. Just driving around in go karts, no big deal. So we found a listing on Google called Large Size Shoe Shop, and it's brought us here. Yeah. Hell yeah. We had to walk about 30 minutes through back alleys, but I think we finally found some shoes. So we were pretty hungry, so we picked a random food place that looks pretty good, and they're gonna serve us like little meatballs or something. We're not really sure what they're called. We're about to find out if they're good or not. So the food was really good. Now William's taking us down another back alley as we look for t-shirts and sushi. Hopefully we make it there in one piece. All right, it's a new plan, we're getting kebabs. If you guys remember earlier, we were looking for the actual animate that had all the different stuff. And so we finally found it and we're headed to the top floor, which is where all the cards are at. And we're gonna make our way down. Uh, we're topping off the night with some ice cream. Uh, Got our final treat of the night. So today's our last day in Tokyo. We're headed out. We're going to get breakfast at the same exact place that we got breakfast yesterday because it was really good. And we'll keep you posted. So we got lucky and we managed to grab a seat on the bullet train going to Shinosaka. And from Shinosaka, we're going to try to go to Hiroshima. So we just got to Hiroshima and first impressions are it's much, much quieter than Tokyo is. Another interesting fact is that all of the local roads, they don't have uh, stoplights. They just have, uh, what do you call them, like police officers who kind of wave you through and kind of guide and direct all the traffic that comes through, which is really interesting. But overall, just, just a much quieter city for sure. So we're t on our way, uh, taking a ferry on a detour to an island that's just right outside of Hiroshima. There's a really cool shrine here and there's also a really cool Buddhist temple and it is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and all, all of the shots speak for themselves.
got done with a beautiful sunset at, at Izukushima. I'm sure you guys can tell from the shots. William's laughing at me right now. But we're back at the hostel. We're gonna have a quiet, peaceful night in. And then tomorrow, we're gonna go, hopefully, find a... Ryokan? Ryokan? Ryokan, Ryokan in the yeah. countryside and relax. So yeah, see you guys tomorrow. So we got up really early this morning in Hiroshima, and today we're going to be touring Hiroshima Castle and the A-Bomb Memorial Zone before we head over to Kyoto. So we just arrived at Kyoto Station. Now we're gonna take a local bus about an hour and a half outside of the city to a Ryokan. in downtown Kyoto and we're on the hunt for some really cheap ramen and supposedly it's tucked way back here in one of these alleys so we're alley searching right now and later I'll give you guys a tour of our capsule hostel which is really cool you just sleep in like a little pod space it's pretty neat and yeah here's some shots of the food if we find it So these are the train stops on the subway. All one, two, three, four, five, six of these lines all leapfrog around each other underground, all going the same direction on this two-way path, which is incredible if you think about the amount of engineering that goes into that. Williams 
talked me into renting a bike to hit the, up the next couple of places here. So for basically five dollars, we're gonna go in these for two hours. We're gonna go biking around various temples and shrines in the area. So we just parked our bikes and we're going to check out the Teniruji Temple. And we're also going to go check out a bamboo forest that's up here as well. Holy cow. And that's this, this little thing. So we got really lucky, we were trying to get to the JR station to get to the other side of the city and we couldn't figure out the bus routes because they were all in Japanese and this really kind lady spoke a little bit of English and she actually gave us a ride all the way to the JR station. So that's the clip that you guys just saw. But it was really fortunate and just goes to show you that there's good people everywhere. So we've just arrived at Fushimi Inari Taisha and it's really cool. So here's some pictures. So funnily enough, we've been in um, Japan for seven days now and we still haven't had proper sushi. So we came to one of the rotating sushi places where it comes around on a conveyor belt and we're gonna have some sushi tonight. Six, fifteen. 15. <laughs> so we're starting our last day in Kyoto in Nishiki Market, which is this huge, super long street that goes both ways for maybe a quarter of a mile, full of just every single type of local food shop or, you know, 
souvenir shop you could possibly think of, but it's super, super cool. And so we're gonna grab a snack here and then head on to our next destination. <laughs> so William is looking for a teapot. Or not a teapot, but what? Teacup. Teacup. He's looking for a very special teacup. Now we're in a knife shop where they make everything by hand. You can see them back here. Sharpening wood. These are super, super high in knives. Arrived at Manga Can. <laughs> OG Yu-Gi-Oh Manga. All right, so we've arrived at our hostel here in Osaka. So we've got a special surprise for you guys today. We're doing a four ramen Bowl review. So we're going to be comparing the four best ramen brands from 7-Eleven and figuring out which one's the best. And we've done some research and these four are the best ones. And we'll do them one at a time and let you know if you're in Japan which one you should get. Uh, we can have everything. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and Nakamoto. So also. do you know like the, the, the steps? Because I can't read this. <laughs> You put in uh, hot water, uh, hot water, and yeah. put here. Okay, and then so when it's ready, you add it up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For everything. Three min uh, five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Five minutes, four minutes, and three uh, five minutes. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's yeah. not bad. Oh, thank you very much for yeah. the explanation. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'll go get hot water. All right, so we're pouring the hot water in now. Get them all prepped. Everyone has to make their predictions down which one the best one's gonna be. I think it's gonna be this one because this is the Michelin star one. Yeah. William, which one do you think is the best? I already tasted this one. I, I would say this one from the like the, the images on the on the cover. Okay. I'd say this one looks really good. Okay. And then and then you're saying that this one's yeah, gonna be the best, right? This one is right? the best. So, this, so he thinks this one's gonna be the best. All right. Cool. So here we go. Let's jump in. So we'll it, give them the it's been five five minutes or four minutes. This yeah, one? it's all five or four minutes, yeah. so I think they're pretty much ready now. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's jump in. All right, so verdict on the first one. I thought it was really good. It had this really interesting mayonnaise, and we put it on, we're like, okay, this is going to be kind of weird, mm -hmm. but it's actually wasabi mayonnaise. And so you you bought in like bit into it, and at first it's really mild, and then all of a sudden you got like this kick of wasabi, and now it's this whole other level of complexity to it. It's got little meat pieces in it, so this one was really good. Yeah, really impressed. We're gonna try the next one now. It's a menma. You know that that one is uh, from bamboo. Bamboo? Yeah, baby bamboo. Oh really? This? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know it was bamboo. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oil? Yeah. And then we just mix it up. Okay, so what's the verdict on the Michelin star one? I thought it was pretty good. It was pretty good. After the first one, it was it seemed kind of boring, but I think as far as like ramen goes, like that's kind of what I think of when I think of yeah. ramen. Like a really mild, kind of nuanced yep. flavor. So that one was good too. I agree. Oh, there's, mm, there's meat and stuff in there. Oh, that smells really good. Yep. No, it's like... <laughs> That's a good thing, a good, go. good, good way to eat ramen. <laughs> so that's how you, you eat ramen, right? Yeah. Okay, so the third one was also tasty. Yeah. Had a bit more flavor than the second one, but not as much flavor as the first one. Yep. I liked it, the broth was a bit thicker, as you can see when once it's all mixed together. Very tasty, mm -hmm. good vegetables, um, so it's definitely up there. And we're about to try the spicy one. Open it. Spicy. Oh yeah, and it's probably way too too thick, right? Yeah. For you, it's it's overcooked. And then we put this. Right? Like chili. This is chili. Yeah. This is spicy. Yeah. All right, maybe put like half. Yeah. That in. <laughs> Just um, taste some. Um, yeah. Maybe we should, we well, should yeah, yeah. We'll taste, taste it, it before we put the chili in. Yeah, we'll taste it beforehand. All right, good oh, slurping. It's, it's already. Quite spicy. Without the chili? Yep. 
We put the rest of the chili sauce in <laughs> that we did not have in there before, and we're gonna try it properly as it's instructed with the full amount of chili sauce. Would you like to take the first bite, William? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's more tasty. William's, yeah, it's more tasty. William has no fear. You have to slurp it, right? Let's see, initial reactions. Death? Pain? It's pretty good. No, uh, it's it's not that <laughs> spicy. It's not that much more spicy, but I think there's a little taste that's there that wasn't there before. Okay, all right, here we go. Alrighty, so to conclude, we both agreed that we enjoyed the first one the most yep. because it was a dry noodle, so you could eat everything that was in the container, and we also liked the flavor the most. Yep. However, if we had to pick one out of the true kind of soupy ramen noodle types, we choose the second one just because we think it had the best broth and it had the best flavor well, overall. The second real noodle, the third no, one well, we, the, we the tried. Second, yeah, so it would yeah. be the third one we tried. And that one is the best one if you're looking for like a soupy kind of ramen noodle style. Yeah. But they're really all good, good and yeah. you really can't go wrong because everything uh, is good. Noodles in Japan. Noodles in Japan can't, can't go, go wrong. wrong. So right now we're in Osaka and we're making our way into the Osaka castle and the pictures probably don't convey it very well but it's gigantic it's the biggest castle I've ever seen in my entire life not that I've seen that many castles but it's huge like how big like maybe like a mile by a mile maybe not that much it's huge it's really big so I'll have the picture show you. in the shopping district of Osaka. William, where are we? Tell me. Uh, wait a sec. Uh, Dotonbori. All right, we're, Dotonbori. In, we're in Dotonbori, which is what's called the, the Times Square of Osaka. Is yeah, that correct? Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay, so we were walking around and we saw a giant sign for a Taco Bell, and we found the first Taco Bell that we found. Shoot, did I point too far? We found the first Taco Bell that we've seen the entire time we've been in Asia. They don't have them in uh, Singapore. Singapore. They don't have them in Kuala Lumpur. They don't have them anywhere. This is the first one we've seen in the past like four months. So we're gonna go get some Taco Bell. We're inside the Taco Bell. So it's all really expensive, so we're getting a cheesy beefy burrito for three dollars and fifty cents because the tacos are like five bucks a piece. So we ended up getting a quesadilla instead, so we decided it'd be a little bit easier to split. But look at that, yum, cheese. Also found this spooky little guy who may or may not be alive. Spider-Man fights the oyster. <laughs> so this is gonna sound crazy, but we've literally been walking for what, like 30, 45 minutes straight? Yeah. Down like a single road with shops on both sides, covered like non-stop. And it goes on in every single direction. It's the biggest shopping district I've been in, in my entire life. Like the outlet malls back home, like if you've ever been to an outlet mall, imagine that. 
by times like 30. That's how big this is. It's insane. And they're like multiple floors each place. It's so huge. It's huge. So now we're in the 100 yen store, which is like the equivalent of like the dollar store. Just kind of going through, seeing what they got. It's about the same as what they've got kind of in like uh, American dollar stores. It's just kind of like random cleaning stuff, you know, random kind of household type things. Nothing too crazy. I would actually buy this dude. for the apartment. For the apartment, our spatula. So we found the candy section. We decided we're gonna pick out some candy. So I got these chocolate chip cookies filled with hopefully chocolate. Well, what'd you get? Butterscotch candy for 100 yen. It's a good deal. So as far as chocolate cookies go. It's pretty terrible. It's, it's, it's pretty awful. I'd say it's probably the worst chocolate chip cookie I've had in my entire life. But, as far as cookies go, it was alright. It was alright. It was 100 yen. It was alright. So, we tried the butterscotch and it actually tastes like butterscotch. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, butterscotch cookies, thumbs up. Candy. Candies, <laughs> sorry. Butterscotch candies are good. Alrighty, so, we're gonna end off the night back by our hostel at the Denny's. We're gonna get something and we're gonna see if it's as good as the one that's in Eureka, Missouri. Thank you. I got the. Yeah, it starts at six. But... Alright, your first dish is a chocolate sundae. That's good. Alrighty, verdict on the ice cream sundae, really good, like an 8 or a 9 out of 10. Very tasty, good bananas. And now, we got our pancakes. And some it's real food. What is that, shrimp pasta? Uh, it's like shrimp rice with, uh, what is it, with three cheese and lobster sauce. Nice. So we got lucky with our hostel and they've got a foot bath so at the end of the day you can put your feet in some hot water and just let all the lactic acid just melt away. Alright so the water is really 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 hot. Might have just burned my feet. Holy cow. Oh but now it feels good. Yeah. Okay yeah it's still a little hot though. Wow. Hey guys, so we spent the whole day traveling from Kyo sorry, Osaka to Nikko. Nikko. Yeah. And so we're north about, what, like 100 miles of Tokyo? Yeah. Kind of out in the country. It's a little chilly here. I didn't pack a hoodie. <laughs> so uh, we're staying moving to keep warm. And uh, it's really pretty. We've got some really oh, yeah. beautiful mountains. I'll give the you guys clouds. some shots of the clouds that are kind of scraping the tops of them. And uh, overall, it's a nice break from the city. So we left Nikko pretty early. Um, here in Japan, one of the interesting things is because of the way the time zone is and just kind of how far north we are, it gets dark at like four o'clock every day. And so everything closes at like 
And so by the time we'd actually gone to most of the shrines and temples, they were closed. So we didn't go in a whole bunch of them, but you guys saw those cool shots. They were super beautiful, super cool places. And if you're ever here in Japan, definitely make sure you get there early so you can check them all out and go inside all of them. Right now we're back in Tokyo. We're gonna stay in a real life capsule hotel yeah. for our last night here. And then tomorrow we're gonna go do something before we go to the airport. You'll see. And you'll see then. We've arrived at the capsule hotel. You can see it's a big hallway full of these capsules. And right here, you can see William's there for scale. Pull it off the privacy. And the whole thing is like maybe like four feet long. So I'm gonna be sleeping in a, in a ball tonight, it seems. My itty bitty capsule hotel. Alrighty, so I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour of my capsule hotel. As you can see, I pulled the little blind down right here. This whole space is like tiny. Like imagine the smallest bed you can possibly think of. And like that's how big the little thing is. So right here, I don't think this does anything. Yeah, no, that just kind of chills there. We've got our sheets right here. But what's really cool is down here, you can see, we've got a little alarm, a little radio. You can tune it. Check that out. Pretty cool. We've got lights here. Some things in Japanese. We've got a little power outlets. So you can plug in your stuff, plug in your phone while you sleep. You've got a light, you got a fan you can control. A little mirror back here. All in, uh, you probably live in one of these for weeks at a time, which is what people do when they come here. What a lot of business people here do is they live out kind of in the country a little ways and they'll come in for the week, live in these capsule hotels during the week, and then on Friday, whenever they're done with their work, they'll commute back out, take the, the Shinkansen, the bullet train, back out to the country. And so what's, what's really cool about these is that they basically have everything you need and nothing you don't and they're fairly inexpensive for what they are just because you're only paying for a very very small space which is really cool. Nishiki fish market here in Tokyo and uh, it seems that it's actually not open on Sundays. Yeah. Wonder who planned that. It's all good though because we got some cool views of the buildings and they're humongous. It's a whole complex here right on the water of just buildings purely designed for the wholesale of fish and other things here in Tokyo. Biggest and fish market in the world. It's the biggest, biggest fish market in the world. So pretty cool. Now we're gonna go try to get a good view of the city from on top of a tall building somewhere and we'll give you guys some shots of that. Alrighty, so note to self, if, if you're ever here in Tokyo and you want a really good view and like a reasonably priced, like really, really fancy place, it's flipped on here, but it's Vin Tetsu. Vin Go Tetsu. to Vin Tetsu. It's really, really good. You're on the 56th floor of a skyscraper. You got an amazing view, really good food. $15. We spent $15 on lunch. Pretty easy. So, that's the place to go. Sunshine City here in Tokyo at the biggest Pokemon store in the world in the entire world so it's like absolutely massive like I don't know like how how would you describe how big it is uh, it's probably like as big as an Ikea Ikea big oh, well it might not be that big it's not quite <laughs> that big it's like as big as like no. uh, the floor like one floor of Ikea it's massive yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's really big, so we're gonna show you guys around. So we're back at the Tokyo Narita Airport. We're gonna grab one more snack before we hop on the plane and we leave Japan. It's been a good trip. I'll probably have another section after this where I talk a little bit more about the trip and reflections and stuff. But for now, you'll get some food shots and then some more stuff afterwards. Okay, so one last note before we leave Tokyo. William's been looking for Kit Kats, and so we found a whole Kit Kat stand. You can get all kinds of flavors. You can get grape, grape Kit Kats, matcha, tea Kit Kats, melon, strawberry, melon flavor, all the different flavors of Kit Kats. You even have a wasabi one somewhere in here. He finally found it. He's gonna get some. It's gonna be good. Got a banana Kit Kat here, and it's amazing. And you can eat a Kit Kat however you want. That's no, the beauty of Kit Kats. No, no, he wants to see the, the world burn. All right, see you guys. So now that I'm back in Singapore and I've had a few days to reflect, I want to share with you guys two main uh, takeaways from my time in Japan. And the first one is that Japan is an amazing place, and if you ever get the chance to go there, you absolutely should. Even on our flight back home from Japan, me and William were already talking about all the different places that we wanted to go back to, and all the different places that we just didn't have time to check out, even though we were there for a full 10 days. There's just so much to see, and there's so much diversity even just within Japan, you know? So one day you could be up in the mountains and it's chilly and you gotta wear a sweater. And the next day you could be on a beach, you know, just one bullet train away. The second takeaway isn't so much a takeaway, but a personal lesson that I had to learn the hard way. If you guys are watching, you're my family, hi family. You already know this, but my first night in Tokyo, uh, me and William went out and I was roofied actually at one of the, one of the restaurants that we went to. And while I was um, unconscious, my cards were taken and not only was my business card compromised, but my personal card as well. And I lost uh, the majority of the money in my business, which was several thousand dollars, which was a pretty big hit for me, um, just being kind of in my first year and starting off. And I learned a couple things from this, and one was kind of about my own personal attitude, which was flawed. One of the biggest things I learned is that it's important to always be aware of your surroundings and never be too comfortable, especially when you're in a new place, and always plan ahead. And so part of the problem was that night I hadn't really planned what I was going to be doing or where I was going to be going because I, I, was, I was just kind of going with, with my gut and kind of jumping around. It could have been a really terrible trip from that point onwards, finding out that I'd lost pretty much all of my savings and all of my accounts, everything I had worked for for the last year. If I had been there by myself, I probably would have spent the rest of the trip curled up in a capsule hotel, not doing anything with my time, you know, just kind of wasting away feeling bad for myself. But fortunately, I was with William Savard, and I gotta give a huge shout out to William because he's the only reason that I got out of bed any of the rest of the time I was there. He always had something cool planned, and not only did he have something cool planned, he showed me that, that we could have a good time and that I could explore even on a budget without you know, having to spend a lot of money. And I think that up until that time, you know, my kind of attitude has kind of always been like, oh, well, you know, if I can just save up a bunch of money, I can buy this cool thing or I can take this super awesome trip. And the truth is that, that this trip, more than anything else, showed me that you can go to one of the most expensive places in the world, you can fly you know, thousands of miles, and you can do it all for extremely cheap. We took the cheapest airline we could there, um, and it wasn't comfortable. Uh, I wish I had taken a picture when I was on the plane because my shoulders were actually above the top of the seat. Um, shout out to Air Asia. Not a bad airline, but definitely not designed for people over, you know, six feet tall. Um, and 
the whole time we were there, we did things that were that were really cheap. We didn't go super crazy, needed the fanciest restaurants. I think the Pokemon Cafe was the most expensive place we ate at the whole time we were there. But the ramen challenge, that was William's idea because he knew I was trying to save money. And that whole meal, eating four different ramens, including the Michelin star one, which is amazing, cost us less than $5 a piece. We went and we ate at a Denny's. Um, even the really fancy restaurant that we ate at that was right at the, on the top of the skyscraper, our last day in Tokyo. Even there, we, we split a meal two ways. We kind of got funny looks, but I think we each spent like $10, which is amazing. You can take something and you can let it ruin your trip or you can let it ruin your day, or you can turn it into an opportunity to learn to experience a country or experience a situation in a different way. So was Japan the luxury trip that I thought it was going to be? No, no, it definitely wasn't. But what I found instead was that I learned that I could have just as much fun, if not more fun, on 10% of the budget that I went into thinking I was going to have, and that I could learn to appreciate the situation more and appreciate the things that I already have, instead of always thinking about, you know, what's the next thing I can buy, you know, or how am I going to spend this next paycheck that I get. And so that's my reflection for my Japan trip. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you guys like it, please subscribe or share it with your friends or anyone else who might be thinking about studying abroad in Asia. Um, that's all. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more.